Cool. So heading into our next session, um, we, you've, you've heard throughout um, the entire day uh, mentions around API management, and um, we've talked a lot about building APIs using serverless. Um, and we have here two people that uh, know everything about web APIs with serverless. In fact, uh, we're delighted to have Mike Budzinski, who is joining us uh, from Seattle. He's a product manager on API management, so he's literally building the product. And then uh, we're also joined by Jeff Holland, who is the lead of product managers uh, in Azure Functions. So he is also building everything uh, related to Azure Functions. So if there's anyone that you want to thank for Azure Functions to, that is absolutely Jeff. And I know that in the chat, um, there were a couple of folks asking about fun facts. I'll be very, very quick about this. Um, so fun fact about our interesting uh, fact about Jeff, uh, Jeff and his wife were playing a game on the Ellen Shaw show and they actually won, which means that during the break, um, Ellen had them sit on, on her couch um, and then she ended up giving them a car, which Jeff is now using to get into work. I thought that was incredible. I watched the YouTube video. I'll share a link uh, with you all on the stream as well. And then uh, interesting fact about Mike, uh, he actually did a lot of photography and he was awarded by um, National Geographic and BBC and he was featured uh, there. Welcome both of you. Cannot wait to hear more about improving the performance of your serverless APIs. Great. Thank you very much. And we are both thrilled to be here. Uh, I'll, I'll kick this off and then Mike can get started very quickly. But as Simona mentioned, APIs is a huge deal in the serverless world. Like just as a small data point, when we look at all of the new functions that are being created every day, over half of them are serverless APIs. And folks tell us like, hey, this is a really simple way for me to spin up an endpoint or an API that can run in the cloud and do all that serverless goodness when it comes to scaling and reliability. Uh, so this is powerful. But I think what a lot of folks might not know is that there's a ton of value that can be added onto those functions if they pair it with this another amazing offering in the Azure world, which is Azure API management. So if you don't yet know about API management, you absolutely need to listen in. Even if you know about it, though, we constantly have more goodies here. Mike, maybe I'll just start with you. Kind of why, why would somebody consider taking their HTTP triggered function, their serverless API, and then binding that with API management? Great question, Jeff. So I'll talk specifically about the code first approach to building APIs, and then you will talk a little bit about the API first approach of building APIs. So with the code first approach, you usually start with a single function, a single function app, and you implement your API that way. But as you keep building your API and extending it, you you add more and more of those functions and function apps, and maybe even some other services along the way. So API management lets you aggregate all of those services, all of those APIs in one place. So it not only aggregates the runtime of the APIs, but it also aggregates the control plane of all of your APIs. So let me show you some of the exercises that we have prepared for you. This is the GitHub repository. This is the GitHub repository that we just made available to, to the public. It walks you through building and managing service APIs in Azure. You can look it up under this organization, under this repository name, or you can just go to the aka.ms slash serverless APIs slash workshop. This repository is oriented at exposing your functions for API management and guiding you through monitoring as well. So we'll perform some of those exercises from this workshop to outline the benefits of API management. But if you want to perform more of them, you can just go to this repository after this session and do it all yourself. So I already have all of my Azure resources provisioned in the Azure portal. And I have two function apps. I have one application insights resource, and I have one API management resource. One of the function apps is already imported into API management, but I want to import the other one. 
And it's very easy. I just go to my function app in the Azure portal, scroll down to API management, and select my function app, my API management service from the dropdown. Create a new API, and I will enable the same application inside that is already attached to the function app. I will enable it in my API management service. The next step is I select all the functions inside the function app and import them. I can give my API a human friendly name, as well as an API suffix. And why it's still importing, what you will see in a second is the API management experience embedded into the function app view in the Azure portal. So keep in mind that I'm still inside the function app, but I can manage my API in API management from here. And that's one of the function apps. I also have the other one right here. And this one is already exported to API management. I did it yesterday. I can test this function. I can just call the method. And this method, this API call, will go from API management to the function app, back to API management, and back to the client device that is my computer. As you can see, it succeeded. It returned a sample response and a bunch of headers, but the response status code is 200 OK. So everything is working. Next, as part of this exercise, I want to do a few things. First, I will apply a throttling policy on my API. A throttling policy will remit the number of calls to, for example, 10 calls per minute so that my API isn't abused by some malicious actors. After I do that, I will try to break my API, my function app, by bombarding the API with thousands of the thousand of API calls within 10 seconds. But before I would have applied, uh, because I would have applied the throttling policy, it shouldn't matter. And then we will create a new API version. So API Manager allows you to not only uh, protect and govern the runtime of those APIs, but also guides you through management of the lifecycle of, of all of your APIs. So I'll create a new API version, and then I'll also go to the application insights to see what happened in my API. So let's start with the policy. I can apply the policy either via a visual form, or I can go to the XML file with all the policies. Policies in API management are simple rules that you execute on the incoming requests and outgoing responses. We are applying a throttling policy, but you can also apply many other policies, such as, for example, caching, authentication, so validation of job tokens, uh, course policies, transformation policies, for example, conversion of the payload from XML to JSON, or uh, editing of the headers, and so on. There's around 45 policies that you can apply. So this policy has now been applied on the whole API level for all of the operations for one of my APIs. And I have a script that will try to make a 1,000 API calls in 10 seconds. The policy I applied specifies that only 10 calls are allowed per minute. Because of the distributed nature, this policy might not be super precise, but it should be mostly precise. And as you can see, the call made a few tests, and the total, yeah, as you can see, 200 uh, succeeded, 730 failed. If I run it again, I should get all of them should be failing. And you were I able to we add this throttle policy. So like you took a function uh, that potentially could scale to this, but maybe you don't want it to because either it's going to be hammering some downstream service or, you know, you don't want your function to scale too far and get a denial of wallet attack. I think I've heard it before your function goes too far. So you've added this throttling policy completely through API management. You didn't even have to touch that function code. Your function code just knows how to take a request and respond it. And API management is the one that's enforcing that throttle policy. Is that right? Correct. Correct. Uh, as you can see, it returned 429, which is uh, request throttled to many requests, and for all of the requests that I tried to make, so for all 1,000 requests. 
And this is the response that API management gives you, that you have exceeded the allowed number of calls. You can set it uh, for per API, per subscription key, or you can set it in general. But you are absolutely right. This is one of the ways to protect your API. Next, we can go and see what, uh, like when you actually develop your API, you, your API evolves as well as you know, along the business logic of, that you want to implement. So as the requirements, business requirements change, your API might need to change as well. So for that purpose, API management allows you to easily create new versions of an API. So you can create a product V2, for example, and have the V2 uh, version in the URL path of the API. And this allows you, oh, this allows you to easily create a new version of the API and to make some breaking changes to your API without impacting the client applications. And as I said, it's very handy as you're, especially if you're a growing company, growing product, your requirements will be changing all the time and you need to somehow accommodate it and to let the API consumers and know that there are some new versions of the API. That's great. So if I understand this one right too, like uh, one of the challenges, like your API will version, and rather than taking your function or whatever else it might be and adding like an if statement at the very beginning, and it's like, if V1, then do this thing. If V2, do this thing. You keep the V1 function just chugging along. You publish a V2 version that only has the V2 logic. And now API management can kind of expose them both give you something like a path field where you say like v1 v2 and it just routes them to the right app so that you only have to control one version logic in one exactly exactly and further down the road you might want to deprecate the v1 mm -hmm. of the api but you don't want to do it as soon as you introduce v2 you need to give some time for the api consumers to switch to the v2 version and quickly because i know that we are running out of time uh, this is just application insight. So as you can see, this is my API management service and my function I'm being called. And I can, for example, investigate all of the failures that happened because of the throttling policy. So not only you can browse the logs, you can also make some queries, like explore the top reasons for failures and so on. And that's something that if you want to learn more about, you can do it in our uh, workshop, Service APIs workshop. That's great. Uh, yeah, this to... is a, a, a perfect reference for people to go to. I know Simona posted in chat as well. Uh, so I recommend folks check out that repo to get this set up and really run through the demo that you just showed, Mike. I know one question that comes up for me sometimes when I talk about all of the goodies that come from API management, and you've just shown a ton of them, uh, which is great, is how do I think about the cost aspect of API management? Especially, I might be choosing certain functions because consumption-based pricing. I know previously API management didn't have a consumption-based pricing tier. I know that's changed some. Anything you want to add in terms of how folks should think about which SKUs to choose or which SKUs are available when they're pairing these two things? Yeah, for sure. I demonstrate everything on, on the consumption SKU, which is a serverless SKU. But if you want a dedicated SKU, we have a bunch of those as well. So we have private networking features. We have developer portal that lets you expose your APIs to consumers and so on. So depending on your use case, you might want to evaluate one versus the other. They, of course, also differ in pricing as well as pricing models because the serverless consumption skill is serverless pricing while dedicated to pay a fixed monthly fee or hourly fee. That's great. And one question that came through too on that throttling demo, which is one of my favorite, like go to, uh, I published some sample, maybe I even write a blog post and I'm like, go try out this function, but I don't want someone to hit it too hard. Could you set throttles to say like, hey, maybe I'm okay with a lot of calls coming, but I don't want like one bad user. Like I don't want one person hitting this a million times, but if I end up just having a thousand users, that's okay if they're all hitting it once a minute. Uh, have those types yeah. of controls as well? Of course, uh, you can either block a certain users based on their authentication method. This could be JWT tokens, it could be subscription keys. You can block certain IP addresses, as well as you can specify different throttling limits for different users. So you have plenty of those mechanisms that you can explore. 
That's great. Awesome. And then the last thing I'll mention too for folks, uh, Mike did a great job in that sample. Again, that Azure samples repo uh, that we'll show here in, in the bumper slide in a second, but also was pasted into chat. A great resource to look through. The other approach that we're seeing a lot of traction on recently is design first methodology, where maybe you don't write the function code first, you actually want to describe that contract. Like before you write that first of code, you want to understand what should the product API look like? What should it receive? What should it return? You can go into that API management portal that Mike was showing. You can design those APIs. You could see where he was defining like throttles and seeing those APIs listed. You could just go build and describe the API you want. And a tool that's going to be shipping here in the next few days is a tool that will now let you take that API definition, that open API spec, and scaffold out functions in any language to go and start writing. So you could go create that products v2 API, you go describe it, and then in Visual Studio Code, you right-click API management and you're like, you know what, go generate me a TypeScript function based on what I just described here in API management. And it will go create the whole project for you. And it will set up the HTTP routes and it will even create like types in TypeScript or classes in Python or C Sharp that map to the things you want to, to see. So keep an eye on that. A very exciting space, definitely something that I wanted to make sure we had a ton of time on. Because like I said, APIs is so important in the serverless world. But I think there's a ton of people who don't know or maybe haven't tried it yet, this API world. So check out the sample, give it a shot. Mike, thank you so much for joining as well. You, Anything Jeff. else you want to plug before we sign off and get ready for the next session? Maybe just one last mention that we also plan to implement this API first approach inside our Visual Studio Code extension. So we'll be able to execute this flow from our Visual Extension as well, Visual Code extension as well. But overall, thank you, Jeff. Great session. And I encourage everyone to try to experiment with service APIs. Yep. Thanks, Mike. You did all the work. I, I just got to ask the questions. So <laughs> uh, we'll let we'll let Simona come back here. And for folks who are here, uh, I hope you're used to this this money maker, this Ellen DeGeneres appearing face, because uh, I'm not going away anytime <laughs> soon. <laughs> that was so cool. I had no idea. So let let me. I, I was. You just left me with a jaw drop, uh, Jeff, right there, Jeff and Mike. Um, like. Am I hearing correctly? Will I be able to create an API management definition in the portal or in VS Code? And then that's going to generate automatically code for me um, without anything else to do, just a right click? Uh, that's it. Uh, you And you have to fill in some of the code yourself, but we'll scaffold it all out. So <laughs> it, won't, it, won't, it doesn't have AI yet where it's like, oh, you wanted to get the weather. I'm going to call weather.gov or whatever. Uh, but it will yeah. at least give you everything else for you to write that, that Axios line or whatever. That is so, so cool. Have we heard it here first? Is that is it safe to, to say that? And I, I'm only we, accepting yes. Uh, yes, you've heard it here first. <laughs> there was a webcast with some volcano lightning, but it didn't count because this is the one that counts. Uh, and yes. that should, should be rolling out here in the next two weeks or so. You heard it here first. Tweet about it. Make some noise. Um, we're so, so excited to have this happen. Thank you so much, Mike uh, and Jeff, for, for this really awesome session. Um, Folks on the live stream, uh, warm round of applause to uh, to Jeff and Mike for their awesome session. Uh, and make sure to check out the resources that they've talked about. So we have the serverless workshop that um, Jeff and Mike have mentioned a couple times. And there's, uh, there's a few more resources here that are super useful. Web APIs and serverless are one of the most important topics. And uh, serverless and API management is actually um, is helping us a lot with those web APIs.